We're going to get the latest U.S. government report on inflation tomorrow. And once again, many economists believe the spike in prices is going to be quite high compared with a year ago. Inflation's bite has been particularly pronounced with some groups of Americans. That includes seniors living on fixed incomes and millennials who had already lost ground during the financial crisis and the Great Recession. Economics correspondent Paul Solomon reports. Oh, prices has gone way out of control. At the South End Senior Center in Hartford, Connecticut, rising prices have seniors like 67-year-old Hyacinth Yenny feeling the burn. You look at your electrical bill, you look at your gas bill, you look now, especially now, food bill. It's ridiculous. I like hamburger. Retired utility worker Mark DeMeo. It's up a dollar a pound, so I cut back. In Kennerdell, Pennsylvania, where backwoods broadband is intermittent... I live in the country, so that happens sometimes. 34-year-old Hannah Schall says she can't cut back on formula for her nine-month-old, but the price... It used to be, you know, $35. Now we're paying 50 So that's $15 in nine months. That's crazy. And in Greenville, South Carolina, Schall's fellow millennial, nonprofit development manager Amanda Rice got a rude awakening in December shopping for a used car. So I didn't realize how expensive it was until I saw the 2021 and I was like, hold on, that's around the same price that they're selling the, the 2015. A car she needed for her side gig as a rideshare driver. To tie myself over into that next paycheck because of what's happening in our economy right now. What's happening is inflation. In economics, more money bidding up fewer goods and services. And right now, COVID inflation. The government printing and doling out more money to prevent a pandemic collapse. COVID-clogged supply chains providing fewer goods. Workers afraid to catch COVID staying home providing fewer services. No surprise that prices have shot up and no surprise that folks who live paycheck to paycheck, especially the old and young, are the hardest hit. The cost of living, it's become more difficult to, to sustain myself. In Riverside, California, Antonio Naharo said his two part-time jobs in retail and for the county were paying less than his pre-pandemic job as a state election worker. So you've been blindsided by the increase in prices? In hindsight, yes, thinking that I would still be able to get by or manage myself the same way in the past. In that regard, Naharo, age 30, is a typical millennial. They're used to stable prices, really, for their entire working career. Economist Allie Wolf, herself a millennial. Really, for the, the past 15 years, they've had roughly 2% inflation, and that's what they're used to. So costs go up a little bit, but their wages go up a little bit, and so their purchasing power has roughly been stable. And then the pandemic hit, and it really just turned the dynamics upside down. Case in point, 38-year-old Alexandra Upton. She shares an apartment in Santa Fe, bikes to her job as a restaurant server, yet struggles mightily to make ends meet. I'm angry. I'm very angry. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm still in this situation, so I just have to make do. Get a second job, pare down, eat one meal a day at the restaurant. So you eat one meal a day on your night shift at the restaurant and that's it? Yeah, and we have had pounds of rice and pasta and we have some beans, you know. But you can't afford the fruits and vegetables? No, no, absolutely not right now. Nope, and I'm a vegetarian. These aren't abstract issues to me. Some millennials have resorted to even more desperate measures. Last month, I was kind of in dire straits. Um, I had to donate plasma twice a week to afford rent. How much do they pay for plasma? For newcomers, you get a bonus anywhere between 100 to 150 per donation. But after the first month, it will drop to 50 to $60 per donation. We're pre-planners, so we stock up pretty well. Even the most self-sufficient millennial we found was feeling the pinch. Ammunition is super duper expensive right now. I hunt with a 30-30. Um, a the box of shells used to be maybe 20 bucks. They're 40 now. What do you hunt? Deer, bear, turkey, in our backyard. You, wait a second, you don't, you don't kill bears in your backyard, do you? You betcha. And you eat the bear meat? Yes. It's not my favorite, but if you skin it correctly, get all the fat off of it, it's not too bad. What about deer? 
It's absolutely delicious. We've actually shot deer out of our living room window. You mean so you see a deer, you open the window and just shoot the deer? Yep. But it's now more expensive because ammunition has gone up in price. Welcome to the country. But wait a second. Shal drives into town to work as a nurse. Has your salary gone up? Not to match the prices. Shal's plight is representative of average American workers. Incomes rose nearly 5% last year, but inflation was at 7%. Wages are going up, but they're not going up as much as we've seen the inflation rate. And inflation isn't just outrunning worker paychecks. How about retired seniors living on so-called fixed incomes, paychecks that never rise? They can't just get out and get themselves a big job that can pay them a lot of money. Some do get small jobs. 71-year-old Inilda Pena works part-time at the Hartford Senior Center to help cover her rising food costs. I'm diabetic, and I have to have certain diet, lettuce, and vegetables. Those things are expensive. But the Social Security payment went up this year. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, not that much. <laughs> In fact, payments from Social Security, which provides most of the typical seniors' income, went up 5.9 percent in January, the largest cost of living adjustment in 39 years. But again, inflation was 7 percent last year, and therefore, says the Senior Citizen League's Mary Johnson, Their COLA, or their cost of living adjustment, isn't keeping up with those other rising costs. Rising costs like a $21.60 increase in the monthly Medicare Part B premium from $148.50 to about $170, a 15% increase deducted directly from Social Security checks. Medicare Part B has increased over the years three times faster than the annual Social Security COLA. Um, and that's been true for decades. But decades in which prices for other essentials didn't go up as rapidly as they're increasing now, putting the squeeze on seniors. Like 76-year-old retired house painter Robert DeRay. His Social Security, about $1,300 a month. Mortgage, $835, plus... My gas bill is 200 a month. My electricity is about 100, 150 a month. My water's been about $100 a month, but I'm hoping that goes down since I fixed the toilet. But when you subtract his Medicare Part B premium of $170, he's underwater by more than $100 a month, sustained by SNAP benefits, food stamps. He says he can't even afford the $2 lunch at the senior center. Of course, these folks want to know just what we all do. How long will the current inflation last? And it provokes furious debate among economists, including a famous one loudly unconcerned a year ago. I was relaxed about the inflationary outlook. Nobel laureate Paul Krugman has been humbled in retrospect. I was wrong. It turns out that inflation has come in way higher than, than I expected. But Krugman himself now asks, what's the cure? Is it simply let up on the gas, maybe tap the brakes, or is it slam on the brakes? Well, there are simply too many unknown unknowns to know, it seems. But then, as people from Hollywood producer Samuel Goldwyn to physicist Niels Bohr to baseball's Yogi Berra supposedly all said, forecasts are difficult, especially about the future. But hey, we'll be living that future sooner and later. For the PBS NewsHour, Paul Solomon.